the symbolism of ash and all 50 shades of grey. Do you know what good and evil are? Of course you do. They are black and white, aren't they? But let us explore this, because great subtlety is needed to understand the mystic symbolism of ash and the colour grey. And in order to present the subtlety, I'm going to use an outrageous example. Example of Hitler. Looking back at history, Adolf Hitler is classified as evil. He was the leader of a country, Germany, ultimately responsible for killing millions. And so were Stalin and Pol Pot. All evil, you will no doubt say. But there again, the US President Harry S. Truman was the leader responsible for dropping the two nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. People seem to now believe well over a quarter of a million people died on that day. And the long-term effects have affected millions. Was he evil? Back to Adolf Hitler. During the 1930s, he pushed through any number of economic reforms, all of which aimed to reduce inflation from its post-World War I level and stimulate industry again. Hitler oversaw one of the greatest expansions of industrial production and civil improvement Germany had ever seen. The unemployment rate was also cut substantially. Hitler also oversaw one of the largest infrastructure improvement campaigns in German history, with the construction of dozens of dams, autobahns, railroads and other civil works. Hitler contributed slightly to the design of the car that later became the Volkswagen Beetle and charged Ferdinand Porsche with its design and construction. So, in a sense, the start of today's German car industry. So, what do you think the vast majority of Germans of the 1930s thought of Hitler? As far as a large number of German people were concerned, he was good. Good for them, which is what good ultimately means to human beings. And there are still Germans alive today who do not think of Hitler as evil, just as there are many Russians who think Stalin was a great leader because they personally benefited. And the ones who might have disagreed are dead. As such, we can only come to the conclusion that good and bad, or good and evil, are not absolutes. It is not black and white. It always depends on one's point of view. Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche on the genealogy of morals. That lambs bear ill will towards large birds of prey is hardly strange, but is in itself no reason to blame large birds of prey for making off with little lambs. And if the lambs say among themselves, these birds of prey are evil, and whoever is as little of a bird of prey as possible, indeed rather the opposite, a lamb, 
Should he not be said to be good? Then there can be no objection to setting up an ideal like this, even if the birds of prey might look down on it a little contemptuously and perhaps say to themselves, we bear them no ill will at all, these lambs. Indeed, we love them. There is nothing tastier than a tender lamb. The why does God allow evil question? I hope the answer to the above question should now be obvious. Because the very words good and evil are subjective, entirely dependent on one's viewpoint. What I regard as evil or bad someone else may view as perfectly acceptable behaviour. And to rant against someone who disagrees with you with the words bad or evil, thus making you good, shows a complete lack of understanding of what the terms mean. Nothing is black or white. All is a shade of grey. And once one has understood this, you are on your way to enlightenment. Of the need for morals, Our ancestors understood that people have to put together their own codes of behaviour on how to live with each other and nature, and the main premise they started with was to not hurt anything, cause it pain. Thus, don't hurt was the underlying principle upon which all our laws are based. But as we have seen, the morality of how to apply this is extremely complex. It is again not black and white. It is beyond Fifty Shades of Grey. Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche Beyond Good and Evil Every morality is, as opposed to laissez-aller, a piece of tyranny against nature likewise against reason. But that can be no objection to it unless one is in possession of some other morality which decrees that any kind of tyranny and unreason is impermissible. The essential and invaluable element in every morality is that it is a protracted constraint. The strange fact is that all there is or has been on earth of freedom, subtlety, boldness, whether in thinking itself or in ruling, or in speaking and persuasion, has evolved only by virtue of the tyranny of such arbitrary laws. And in all seriousness, there is no small probability that precisely this is nature and natural and not laissez aller. The essential thing in heaven and upon earth seems to say it again to be a protracted obedience in one direction. From out of that there always emerges and has always emerged in the long run something for the sake of which it is worthwhile to live on earth. For example, virtue art, music, dance, reason, spirituality, something transfigured, refined, mad and divine. Stability and certainty. What has Nietzsche thus explained to us? that 
once a stable, workable set of laws has been agreed that are acceptable to the majority of people and creatures, they affect. A stable environment is created which is very conducive to everything that makes life worth living. Music, dance, art, games, food, and as he says, spirituality. But when a small number of people are permitted to break those laws without censure, chaos and destruction occur, and society collapses. Protest. Let us suppose you are being affected adversely by a law you think needs a change. Once you have reached the mystic state of greyness, you will have realised that you need to explain the problem. Not call people who disagree with you stupid or bad or evil. Only by patiently explaining will you be able to find if there are other people like you, or creatures if you are acting on their behalf, who are suffering in a similar way. And it is actually unhelpful to speak on behalf of others whose views you do not know. If they care enough, they will speak for themselves, and you must let them. And if there are enough of you, then a change in the law might be in order. Remember, there are billions of shades grey. <laughs>